Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. I have some fun coastal Halloween projects for you today. But first, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the bell to be notified when I post, and a thumbs up and a comment is always appreciated. Okay guys, today I wanted to do spiders. So I was trying to find a way to do spiders for Halloween, but with a coastal feel. So the first project we're gonna do is this cobweb from the Dollar Tree that has a little spider on it. It's covered in this black, um, shiny, glittery, tinsely stuff. And so whenever I see these, I always think, ooh, good DIY, because once you take off all this little tinsel stuff, you're gonna be left with like a perfect size little cage to do your craft. And this is a nice size too, so I think this would make a really good cobweb. Now my plan is to use some of that rope you see off there to the left, the brown rope from the Dollar Tree. And that's not the really thick one, that's kind of the um, medium size kind of one. So yeah, lots of glitter on there. I got that cleaned up. And I decided that I'm gonna use the back instead of the front because the front had all the little clips and everything that the tinsel was wrapped around. And so I'm gonna make that the back and just use the smooth side, which is the back. Now to start my rope, I decided to start by tying it off with a little piece of twine. Um, I did try this approach for one of the rows and I wasn't real happy with it, tying it on. Um, you could kind of see the twine, it kind of took away from it. So I do um, end up hot gluing the whole thing with uh, the rope. I thought about wrapping it in twine, but I thought that might take forever. Um, this really did take quite a while too. Uh, one reason why is because each one of these little things that you hot glue, they're kind of like arched. So you kind of have to like, you know, like push up and make it like arched like the shape should be for a cobweb. And so that was probably the only time consuming thing and just waiting for the hot glue to dry a little bit. So just take your time with this if you do this project. And you know, I think you could do this with twine. You could wrap everything. Um, I'm trying to think of what else you could use. Maybe that like thicker twine that you can get from Walmart might work too. Um, and it might cover a little faster than the thin twine um, from Dollar Tree. So I'm going around my first circle in my little cobweb and just hot gluing that down. Now there was a lot of hot gluing on this project, so be careful. I burnt myself twice with my hot glue gun. Like, wow, dang, my hot glue gun is hot. So I'm gonna do this same thing, just hot glue in all the way around in that little shape. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the straight lines um, after I get all of the outer rings of my little web hot glued down. And this turned out really cool. I really like the effect. Um, I really think the rope looks very coastal, very nautical. Um, it, it's just a really cool effect for Halloween. None of the projects I'm doing today involve black, which, you know, black is like such a staple color for Halloween and it's a great color for Halloween, but sometimes you want to do things a little bit different, a little bit more your style. And that's what I was going for today with these four spider projects. So I got all of my rings cut and glued down. To clean those up, I'm just going around with a lighter and burning off the extra twine. Um, that kind of helps with any extra little pieces of hot glue as well. So I'm going to open another package of rope and I'm going to hot glue that down to the straight line, just going over the one that's already there, just like a little bump. And that seemed to work okay. And I'm just going to take that line straight across. Until I get to the end, cut that off and glue that down. Now I'm gonna do the same thing in the opposite direction, making like an X. I don't want to layer the ropes too high. 
I think one on top of the other is fine, but more than that, it was probably gonna get a little crazy. So we got those two straight lines. So then I'm just gonna do the half part of these other ones so I don't stack any higher than two on the ropes. I don't want it to be crazy like sticking out from the project. So I'm just doing those four remaining straight line pieces and we will have a little spider web for our spider. Now the spider that it came with was just a little plastic spider. I'm just gonna reuse that just by um, adding a little um, paint. So once I get it all put together, I'm just gonna go in with a flame again and clean it all up. I um, really, I had a lot of little drips from hot glue and stuff too, and this helped make those um, less noticeable and it really cleaned up the project. Now you can kind of see the black plastic frame behind it, but not too much. That size rope pretty much covered it all. So here's the little white spider that came on it. And I'm just gonna mix together agave and ivory. I wanted a light blue and just go all over the top of the spider with my sponge brush and make him this pretty light blue. My color scheme today for my projects is going to be um, this color of like light oceany blue, brown like the twine and ivory. And those colors match my color scheme in my house really well. And it's a fun way to bring Halloween in without an obnoxious feel. My son was really happy that I was getting into the Halloween stuff. He's like, yes, finally, enough fall. <laughs> so I get a pretty good coat of blue on my little spider and now I'm ready to attach him. So I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue and just glue him onto his web and that is all there is to this DIY project. What do you guys think? I think it turned out really cute. It, the, the web took a little longer than I thought, but that's okay. Okay, the next project, I wanted to make a web sign. So I'm gonna start with um, one of these little chalkboards from the Dollar Tree. I'm just using some heat and my scraper to try to take the tag off the back because that's what I'm gonna work with. I love these signs from the Dollar Tree. They're a lot thicker and straighter than most Dollar Tree signs. And so whenever I see them, I stock up. And they're a great size for a sign too. I really love them. The only thing I don't like about them is they put that obnoxious tag on the back. So after some heat and some goo gone, we got that off. Now to cover the chalkboard design on the back, I'm just gonna use some of this cheap wood design um, contact paper from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna cut it bigger than the size, slap that on the back, and it's so easy to go around with your little sanding block from the Dollar Tree and just sand off the excess and this is a great way to finish the back of a Dollar Tree sign. And I've always done it this way. I noticed a lot of crafters are doing it this way now too. So I, it looks like it's catching on, so that's good. Now here is some agave and some ivory again. I wanna go for that same light blue color that I used on that spider. And I'm gonna make this sign all that blue color. I want it to be like a really distressed coastal blue color. And I don't know if you saw, it was kind of quick, but I'm going to put a spider web and spider uh, wood cut out on top of this from the Dollar Tree. So you do have to try to cover that black color. So it does take a little bit of chalk paint, a couple uh, coats to cover the black. I'm okay if like a tiny shadow of it shines through because I do want it to look distressed. And to distress it more, I'm using just ivory chalk paint here and a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree. I go around the edges and up and down, all working in the same direction. And then I follow that up with just a baby wipe and I just distress that. Now you'll notice some of the paint came off because I didn't put a lot of coats on there of the blue, so I am gonna have to mix up a little bit more color of that blue and go back and distress again because I don't want the actual black of the blackboard shining through or showing through. So I'm just gonna touch that up and distress all over with that blue. And we are gonna have a beachy distress sign. 
I want to use the same existing holes that was already there. So I just poked the hole in the contact paper uh, with just my weeder for my Cricut. And I'm feeding back in the same string that it came with. I like to tie mine on the front instead of the back. I find that it hangs flatter against the wall like that. And that is ready and ready to go. Now this is the spider in the web that I got at the Dollar Tree. Isn't it cute? I thought I could do something cool with this. I really love these raw wood projects they have for Halloween. I mean, how great for us crafters, right? So I'm going in with just some antique wax by Waverly. The brush really wasn't working. So I switched to a foam brush and I'm just going around the edges. I'm, it's okay if I get a little bit on the spider because I am going to, or the web, I'm because I'm going to go ahead and paint that. So I got that all stained around the edges, that beautiful design on there. And then I also want to stain my spider, the Antique Wax by Waverly. So I'm just kind of going all over where the spider is, taking a paper towel, wiping off the excess. And now the only thing I have left to do is to paint the web. Now, I didn't have to be really careful with the border or the spider because I knew I was going to go back and paint this spider web. And I'm going to do it the traditional white or ivory color. But, you know, you can do any of these things, any color you want to match your decor. I thought this would be a nice contrast against our blue sign. And it's going to go with our color scheme of the blue, the ivory, and the brown or natural colors. So I'm just going in with just a little brush with that ivory chalk paint. And just being careful around the edges, trying to get it like as straight as possible where it borders up against the antique wax. If I do get some on there, I'm just using a baby wipe to quickly wipe off any excess paint to clean that up a little bit. And this was pretty easy. It just took a little bit of detail time to get this painted all ivory. And I really love I, the coastal feel of these spider projects. I've never really done a coastal uh, spider. I usually do a uh, more traditional with my Halloween, but I, I have been doing coastal Halloween for a while, coastal fall, usually more coastal fall though, but I'm going to try to bring coastal into Halloween too. I know you guys enjoy it and I do too. It looks great in my house too. So once I get that all painted, I want to distress my antique wax a little bit. So I'm using some ivory and a chunky brush and just going working in one direction, following that up with a baby wipe and just doing a very light distress on my spider to give it more of a coastal beachy feel. Now I'm going to have a little bit of room left at the bottom of the sign so I thought I would do a word. So I'm using these wood letters from the Dollar Tree and they come with one alphabet in each package so I had to open two and I'm just going to spell out the word eek. Now I want it to be contrasting against the blue sign so I'm painting them ivory as well and they are super easy to paint. They're a little chipped up but that kind of gives me more of my coastal rustic uh, feel so that's cool. Now it is time to put this sky together. So I'm just going to use hot glue. I'm going to go around like on the straight line inside so none of that hot glue is visible. And then I decide to go back and also glue down the middle. So I just glue down the middle, the body of the spider. And I'm just sitting that on there and gluing that to the top part of the sign. It kind of hangs off a tiny bit on the side. So I also made it hang off a tiny bit at the top. And that leaves just enough room at the bottom to put some letters to make a word. And I am just going to attach those to the sign with hot glue as well. And I think this sign turned out really cute. I thought about doing a bow or something like that, but I thought that might be a little bit too much. And I think it looks really fun. So just spelling out the words eek. Because that's what I would say if I saw the spider. Dang. <laughs> what do you guys think? I think it's kind of cute. Okay, another project. This is a spider from the Dollar Tree. And again, it is covered in that tinsel tinsel stuff. <laughs> so I saw it and I'm like, oh, that'd be cute. I could do something with that. So I am just removing all of that tinsel. 
it's kind of wrapped around every so way. It's kind of got pipe cleaners. Those silver things are pipe cleaners holding it on too. So just working to go around and take all of that off. And you'll see it gives me a really great cage to build a spider. Now on this DIY, I'm going to use that white nautical rope you see over there, that really fat rope. I'm going to use a combination of it um, intact and unrolled. So I found that tinsel and the lint roller is definitely the way to get that off my silicone mat. That worked really well. So for the body of the spider, I'm just going to go ahead and use that nautical rope um, all together like that. But I don't think it's going to work for the legs because it's just too thick. So I'm kind of going to do two different ways. So to do the body, I'm going to just, I decided to start in the middle. I cut the, the tape off the end of the rope and just glued down the middle. And then I'm just going to carefully work around. A lot of this is gluing um, to itself, but I'm also getting some hot glue on that plastic cage so that it is glued down as well. And I'm just going around in a circle to make the circle shape of his body. And that worked really well because it wasn't like an oval shape or anything like that. It was kind of like a perfect circle. So just carefully working around, trying to make sure that um, the hot glue stays inside, it's not real visible. Kind of pushing it down as I go. And I'm gonna go all the way around until I don't have any more room left for the rope. And I wanna kinda of cut it at an angle where I can kind of blend that in. Once I get it all filled, it looks like I can get one more row in there before I come into contact with its legs. And I'm glad that I used the intact rope for this part because it gave it a little bit of a different feel for the body. And this project turned out so cool. Now, it was time consuming. So if you're going to do this, make sure, yeah, put on a good TV show or some good music and <laughs> rock out because... This one did take me a while. It really did. So once I get it covered, I just cut off the end and hot glue that down, trying to trim and blend that in as much as I can. It was, That was kind of a hard um, seam to get down, but I did get it looking fairly good. Now for the legs. Okay, so I'm going to take a piece of this nautical rope and I am going to unbraid it. When you unbraid this nautical rope you have three skinnier pieces of that white rope and I think that's going to be the perfect uh, diameter to uh, wrap these little legs. So to start I'm just going to hot glue the tip on the inside of my spider body and then I'm going to start wrapping that around. Now when you first start he has like a knee, so I used a little bit of hot glue uh, to work around that knee to make sure that that stays in place. And then I just continue wrapping down his leg until I get closer to the tip. Then I start using hot glue because I want to make sure that it stays on and then I cut it and glue the end. Now. I have to do that same thing seven more times for all these spider legs. So I'm gonna speed this way up for you because <laughs> there's no need for you to suffer. So basically I hot glue the end, uh, wrap it around, hot glue as I go, cut it off and hot glue the end. And isn't this cool? I think the spider turned out really, really unique and really kind of high end for Dollar Tree. Way, 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 way better than it started. So I've almost got this side of his body done. And then I just have to go in and do the same on the other side. Now, his head is kind of a complex shape. So when I get to his head, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna wrap it with the, this, um, Untwi um, unrolled twine the little pieces but I'm not going to do anything with those like little fangs that you see there 
I just end up cutting those off just to make things easier. So we're almost done. I'm kind of cutting about how long I need and then unrolling as I go. Because I needed, let's see, eight pieces for the legs and I think a couple pieces for the head. Okay, there's all of his legs and we can start working on the little spider head. So again, I just use the same technique that I did on the legs. I start, I start by hot gluing it to the body. I went around and then I was like clip clip on those little uh, things that were sticking out. Just use a little hot glue and we have the head. Now I can still kind of see some of the plastic clips so I did go around a couple more times there. Now this is kind of extra but I still had rope so I decided to go ahead and do the underside of the spider too to make him completely a finished product. And then I thought it would be really fun to hang him with a web. So I'm using an extra one of those pieces of unwound rope, just tying a little knot on the end to hang it with. And then I'm just going to attach this to the inside of my spider with some hot glue. And that is how I'm going to hang him on the wall. So it looks like he's hanging from a web, which I think is really fun. What did you guys think about this project? I think this is my favorite. It turned out so fun. I can't wait to uh, get all of my Halloween decorations out and about. It is my son's favorite holiday and he is going to love all this new Halloween decor. Isn't that cute? I love him. Okay, our last DIY of the day. I thought I would remake this little spider web that I got at the Dollar Tree. So first I'm using some heat and uh, just popping off the little head that was on there of the spider because this is going to now be my back. And I'm also having to use some sharp scissors to cut off the feet that were sticking out from the sides because I am going to use my own spider and I don't need that spider to be on there. Now I'm gonna cover the back, which is all glittery, with some of this contact paper from the Dollar Tree. Um, I just cut it bigger than size and put that on the back to cover up the glitter. Now normally I can just use my sanding block and sand, 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 but since this was like so like arched, the, the lines, that did not really work well. So I did have to end up cutting. So to do that, I just kind of pushed down until I could kind of see the indentation of where the contact paper needed to be cut. And I've never had to do this. I've The sanding blocks always worked, but I think the shape was just too um, crazy for me to be able to sand that off properly and keep that stuck down to the back. But this is a great way to make the back of your projects look finished. And I'm going to use the back of the spider web and kind of do my own thing and make a little coastal spider web. And you'll see I have some spiders there from the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm gonna use an actual spider on my web. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do agave and ivory to give me that beautiful light blue color that I've used on the other projects today. And I am gonna paint the back of our cobweb that blue color. Now my plan here is to do the blue background and then I'm going to paint on a white cobweb. The shape of the sign is great. It, it gives me the shape that I need to be able to paint on the cobweb. Um, I love it. So once I get a good coat of that blue on, I am just drying that with my heat gun and going in uh, with my remaining paint to try to give a second coat there just for any places that the brown at the back of the sign was shining through. Now I'm going to draw on a cobweb. I'm using a white paint pen, but it's not a really great paint pen. And so I kind of just use this for reference. So what I'm doing is just trying to draw a line from opposite side to opposite side. I found they weren't really straight. They kind of arched a little bit. So I just kind of made do. And I was trying to like make those thicker, but I end up going in and painting this more. So I end up using just these lines as reference. 
So I'm going around the edges of the web. Sorry about my head, y'all. <laughs> and um, just drawing those on, just using the shape of the web as reference. Then I was like, this is not like, this doesn't just like stand out like I would like it to. So I'm gonna actually paint it on with some ivory chalk paint. So I went and grabbed a little tiny paintbrush and my ivory chalk paint. And then I'm gonna use that paint pen for reference, which is kind of cool. It's kind of like uh, a coloring book. I can't really freehand paint fantastic, but if I have a guide there, I can kind of keep it pretty close. So I'm going around all the edges and doing like a thicker line of that ivory. And now I want to do the web part. So I'm going to use those lines that I made with my paint pen for reference and just start painting those on. Doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going for a coastal feel. So anything distressed is going to look cool. So just working around, kind of doing half of a line at a time, trying to keep them fairly straight. And we have that part of our web. Now, the only thing we have left to do is like about halfway through, there was another web. And so I'm just like kind of guessing where to go and connecting on the sides, arching the line. So I'm just doing a little arch on each one. Easy peasy. And that is going to be it for our little cobweb. It's definitely a pretty easy thing to paint if you want to do this project yourself. Okay, just using my heat gun to speed that up. And then the only thing I have left to do on this is I am going to distress it just a little bit. So I'm using my chunky brush in that ivory and just distressing in one direction just to give a little final coastal touch to our little cobweb. And carefully using a baby wipe to wipe off any excess, trying not to mess up my beautiful cobweb lines. And that has a hole on the top. I'm just gonna use that for um, the for like an existing hanger. I'm just gonna use some twine and punch that through the contact paper and just tie a simple knot. Easy peasy. Okay, now it's time to work on our spider. In hindsight, I should have just brought the, bought the brown ones that they had at the Dollar Tree. I don't know why I bought the black ones. So I want them to be brown because that's going to go with my color scheme that I'm using today. So I'm just using some of this chalk paint and I think hazelnut. Chalk paint works really well on fabric and these are that like fuzzy fabric. So I thought chalk paint would be good. So I'm just kind of going all over trying to change my little black spider into a brown spider. And this worked pretty well. It did take a while to dry that like fuzzy uh, velour fabric on there, but like chalk paint will stick to just about anything. I find I'm not getting very good detail with that foam brush, so I do go grab a small paintbrush to do the detailed parts of his legs, and that worked way better. Now, he's kind of a three-dimensional piece, so I will have to flip him over and paint his underside as well, but all of this could have been avoided if I would have just bought the brown spider. <laughs> but that's okay. We get another DIY in here. So once I get him all brown, I'm using my heat gun to speed it up. But again, it doesn't dry real fast. But I'm going to go ahead and start working on the bottom anyway. So I am just doing the body with the foam brush and then using the smaller brush for all of the details and the legs. And I really like the actual spider on the web more than the little cute cartoony spider that they had on the existing sign. I might save that head to make something with though. I'm sure I can find something to DIY that with, with that. So I get the underbody all brown too, and now he's not totally dry, but he's kind of dry. I am gonna hot glue my little spider 
on to my spider web. Just here looks about good. And it was kind of still wet, so I was kind of afraid to push down too much. Because if I did, it was going to mess up the paint. And it did kind of mess up the paint, so I had to touch it up a little bit. But we hot glue our spider on there. Now I was thinking it needs something. So I got these metal um, Halloween word signs from the Dollar Tree. And I thought I would use one of those to put a little word on here as well. And I decided Beware would be cool. I thought about using it just metal like that, but I didn't think it really stood out. I didn't really think it went with my deco coastal decor today. So I'm using some Antique Wax by Waverly, and I tried to give it like just a distressed, rusty feel and dried that to see if I liked that better. And I found that still wasn't quite enough. I kind of want the Beware to look like wood. So to do that, I'm gonna go in and just paint it ivory first to give a good base coat and dry that. Then I'm gonna go in with that Antique Wax by Waverly again and go over the ivory and give a wood effect. I've done this on a lot of projects this fall and it turns out really good. It makes the projects look like wood. So just working in one direction using a chunky brush, I am distressing across that ivory and see how it kind of has a wood grain effect already and I'm using my heat gun to dry that up the antique wax on the paint doesn't dry super fast but not too bad and I'm just using some more antique wax to get that evenly distressed and we are ready to attach I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue on about four of the letters to attach that and see how it looks like wood now. And it's more of a contrast against our little spiderweb sign. Okay, final reveal time. Okay, here is our rope spiderweb with our blue spider. I think this turned out so cool and it's nice and large decoration for Halloween. And it only cost a dollar for the web and $2 for the rope, I guess so fun and then right next to it is our spider web sign here that we made we took the chalkboard from the dollar tree we painted that blue we used this beautiful spider cutout from the dollar tree and um, some dollar tree wood letters to spell out the word eek and we did it in a nice wood stain with a white ivory cobweb and i think those projects turned out so fun to hang on the wall and then check out the spider. This is definitely my favorite project. It is so cool. It took some time to put this together, but look how neat it looks. It's so coastal, yet a little bit Halloween. I love it. And I love the fact that it's hanging by a little web too. I think that's super fun. And here's our last project, our little beware spider web. It looks so much better than the original. And I love the wood look with the blue and the ivory and our little spider that we attached as well. What did you guys think today? What was your favorite project? Please comment below and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. I'm not getting a lot of views this fall and I'm working really hard to get you lots of content. So. Whatever you can do, don't forget to watch my videos, and if you like them, share them with your friends. Thanks, everybody. Until next time, bye.